this video, we'll be installing standard vinyl planking. Here is my home office. It's just a normal tough shed, 12 feet by 8 feet. And I've converted it into an, a home office so when I don't have to go to the office, I can just be working from home. It's got the green screen because it's 2020. Do a lot of meetings there, a little air conditioner. I've got a little heater that I just plug in that keeps it plenty warm. The biggest problem that I ran into in making this is the flooring. I opted for those foot square foot little linoleum stickers and they did not hold up well. After about a year I started seeing the edges fraying and they just started getting ripped up. So I am going to be putting in, and I'm halfway done, this vinyl planking. This is not the luxury type, this is about a dollar a square foot, so it's kind of the basic, but this is going to get a lot of wear and tear, so I think it's going to be good. I'll show you the process. The first step is preparing the floor. So I have these, vinyl, these linoleum stickers that were there. Um, you don't have to take those off, they're very thin. So I did cut around the edges just to get a cleaner edge and to vacuum out some of the gunk that had collected underneath there just to make it as flat as possible. And then you need to put an underlayment down for this type of planking. And so I just also just got the bare minimum underlayment, which was uh, $30. And then just laying it down. The first thing to remember when you are measuring the length of your planks is that you need to leave some space at the edge so that as it heats up and cools down, it has room to expand. Now that's a problem here on the ends because as you build them, you're gonna be pushing them that way. So if you just leave a space there, that's just gonna get tucked up underneath there and it's until it rests up against whatever's underneath the, uh, the sheetrock there and then it's going to not be able to expand. So they do make wedges that you can stick right in there. I find the wedges kind of get bent over time and get lodged in there also. So, and that's your only option when you have cement, you just gotta keep, keep putting them back up right. But since this is a plywood underfloor, I just screwed in a screw every few feet. And so it's just resting up against that. So no matter how hard I, end up pushing it that way, it's not gonna slide underneath the sheetrock. But again, that's, an only, that's only an option if you have plywood underneath and you don't wanna um, go all the way through the plywood, obviously, because then you'll just have a hole there. Now your measurements might not be correct, but more likely your wall is actually not completely parallel. So you're gonna run into times when you have a little extra or not enough. If you have extra, there's no Nothing for it, you gotta cut it off until you have an area there. But if you have too much, also not a problem, as long as, because the uh, furring strips or the molding is gonna go over that. So that's just gonna cover it up. As long as that, that gap is not wider than your molding, then you're gonna be just fine. The next step is to measure the length that you need to fill up your space. In my case, two vinyl planks end to end will fit as long as I cut off 19.5 centimeters on one of them. All right, so I know I need to cut off 19.5 centimeters. Modern vinyl planking is fairly easy to install and connect. They come with tongue and groove on all four sides. The edges just kind of click together Put them together like that, and same with the, the sides go together. And they lock. I like this model because there's not a groove right there, so dust and dirt aren't going to get in there. But your preferences may differ. There are a ton of different varieties, starting with this, kind of the cheaper model, all the way up to three, four dollars a square foot. All right, I've got my two pieces. The uh, Armory length one, and then the one that I just cut 19.5 centimeters off. So, get these in position. The end that I cut is going to be up butted against the wall. 
because I need the tongue and groove joints to be together. And just slide in. I make sure that it's level, equal, lined up so that they're the same. Drop it down. And it just kind of clicks right into place. And then I take it and set it on that tongue. Make sure that it's set in there. Check my sides to make sure that I have the right amount of area. I need a little bit more on this side, so here we go. And the next step, jumped out on me, is I have this piece. This is a piece that I've cut one end off, left one tongue here, just so I can slide it in here and gently tap this into place. And then that, just make sure that it's nice and secure. Now I'm going to do the row where I have the center piece and the two smaller pieces on the outside. You want to position your vinyl planks so that they are placed in a staggering pattern. And this way there are no weak spots when you have four corners butting up against each other. The most you'll have is two corners butted up against each other. against the wall is a little different than the rest, so I'll show you how to do that. So now that we've gotten to the end, you can see that these planks are going to be too big, especially when you get over, you kind of see they're going to go in there. So we're going to have to rip these final two pieces uh, lengthwise to make sure that they fit. So I'm going to rip this end right here. So to figure that out, I just come to this wall right here, leave a little bit of space for the expansion, and measure how much I need to cut from there to there. And so I need to rip off, it's like exactly two centimeters. So I'm going to rip off two centimeters on both of these final two pieces, and they should fit there. Now, you're probably wondering about this, the, uh, the door jam here. So there's different options. You can try to cut around it and get a, a fit there. That doesn't look the greatest, but an even better option is to use a vibrating saw. And this has a saw that sits flush against the ground and you can cut there. So just grab a spare piece and you got the right size, then you can just saw all the way in. And that little piece just comes out, so then now when I put the uh, piece in there, it's just going to sit flush underneath there. And that looks a lot better than trying to cut around it. You'll always see a little edge there, but if it's sitting underneath there, it looks pretty nice. Do the same thing on that other side. All right, so now I've ripped the, these pieces so that they will be to the right size. You can see that's about right. Now we do run into a couple problems also. And that is, you've been noticing that it's easy to put them in like um, at an angle and then squeeze them down. But once we go underneath this door jam, we're not going to be able to do that. The other challenge that we face is that we don't have enough room to hammer together. And these last ones, you need to hammer together more than ever because you don't have that angle to do. So here's where our pull bar comes in. The pull bar kind of slides up right to there and then it gives you enough room to hammer like that. So we'll put that in there. Make sure we get the right angle. And then as much as we can, 
push this down to make sure the lift goes in there. All right, the rubber mouth that I had wasn't getting enough power to pull it through, so metal hammer. I'm able to get quite a bit more leverage with that. Yeah, there it's in there. It's in there. Nice and solid. All right, let's see if we can finagle this last one in here. All right. I'm going to want to put this side in first because then I'm going to have to slide it back this way and I'll have that much friction. Whereas if I put this side in first, I'm going to have to slide it that way and I have all this friction. So I'll put the side of this friction in first. So I've got my pull bar over here. Now the final flooring piece is what's called a reducer. You can see that lip right there. Obviously, as you're walking, you don't want to hit the lip, fall, you know, break it, whatever. So there's these called reducers, kind of like molding, and they sit on a metal track. So I'm gonna screw in a metal track somewhere around there. And then this reducer just kind of sits on top of there and then it seals up that so that it looks nice and smooth transition. Thank mm -hmm. you.